but the true preparation does start weeks in advance inside the gym. Uh, I think it's important for any uh, international level, Olympic level athlete to have the goals in mind of what needs to be done at that meet and then train accordingly to those goals. So most of my training inside of the gym has been a lot of focus on refinement. Uh, the routine conditioning doesn't really disappear in, the, in that time frame when you're getting ready for a competition. So having a, a sort of unwavering confidence that you're going to be able to hit routines no matter what the situation is, is, is imperative. And that gave me the ability, you know, if I held that belief strongly, then I was able to go into the gym and focus more on the refinement aspects of the routine. Um, other things that are, are highly important, of course, I start to shift uh, things into high gear mode, what I like to call in, in terms of diet and rest and taking care of my body, mentally preparing myself just conserving as many energy units as I can for any big competition. Um, it's really encouraging for the future of the sport and I think uh, there are plenty of young guys coming up that will ha help Team USA have a strong program for many years to come. Paul and I have been uh, friends for a long time and I would probably put our friendship above our, you know, our, how we compete on the competition floor or being a teammate and I think that's the most important thing. When I get to room with a friend it's just, we get to forget about all this, uh, what we're doing for a while, gymnastics and whatnot and actually talk life so I enjoy it, you know, it, it is kind of a, a nice feeling to be with the reigning Olympic champion and uh, I like to call them the machines, so I don't know if machines can actually give off karma, but if they can, you know, I've <laughs> roomed with them twice now, so it's, I've had great competitions both times, so uh, hopefully that type of trend continues, and we, we kind of look forward to rooming together, because ever since I moved back down to Houston, we don't get to see each other as much, so anytime we get to get out here and you know, perform in a sport that we love, and then at the same token, kind of just take our mind off things, and talk about where we're headed and by the time we're 45 or 65 or whatever, it's cool. You know. On the bus and I'd say as soon as we walk through the tunnel and into that arena on competition day and we see the equipment, instantly high gear. Do what you were born to do, do what, do what you've been doing so well. Let it rip basically. I know I'm kind of the go-to guy on rings in terms of this team, uh, so I had mentally prepared for this being either last up or second to last, meaning that I was going to bring the team home. Following Paul, who, who had just done a good routine, uh, you know, following Paul is not a position that I get very often, so anytime that I do get it, I'm very honored, you know, and I respect the position, and I feel that you know, this team is wanting a, a great performance for me. So right here while I'm being lifted up, up to the rings, all I'm thinking is show it off and hold every position that much longer and, and really own this event. But I, I do a very hard dismount. It's called a layout double-double and there's nothing more that I wanted than the stick right there. Yeah! I was just super excited when I stuck that thing because it it's two flips, two twists in the layout position. There's not many gymnasts that do it in the world. So for me to do it at this competition when we already had such a commanding lead, it was like, boom, the envelope is sealed, it's done, it's over. The U.S. had won. It's, it's an amazing feeling and because it's 2008, Olympics right around the corner, um, I think in every one of us standing up there that we couldn't help but uh, feel what an amazing metaphor this could be for five months from now. Uh, maybe a little bit of foreshadowing. Uh, there would be no greater feeling in the world than doing that five months from now.